Hello and welcome to Yesteryear's Mac Games. Today's subject of interest is what I feel is one of the lesser remembered titles published by Ambrosia Software. We should all remember who they were. Those that had a Mac from the mid 90s and through the noughties will have likely have played at least one of their games. One of what I would call the holy trinity of consistently good Macintosh shareware publishers, alongside Freeverse and, um, how about Fantasoft? Do you agree? Let me know. Anyway, Ambrosia games are always good, and I'm glad I didn't rocket through them all when I first started the channel, as this sort of pacing means I'll have the option of covering one for a lot longer. I'm also a lot better at this than I was when I did Barrack five years ago. Five years? Good grief. Anywho, if you go and watch that one afterwards, you'll know what I mean. Although at least I got to the point a lot quicker. Should we start talking about the game? Pop Pop is a breakout clone, developed by Andrew Campbell. Here he is. We've had a look at a game that Andrew was involved in before, that being Battle Girl, and I can't help but wonder if the passing resemblance of the game's main character and one of Pop Pop's Pops is deliberate. Now, breakout games are a dime a dozen. I've talked about at least two on this channel before, and there are plenty others that come to mind. In order to be remembered, breakout clones need to stand out somehow, be it through theming and presentation, additional gameplay mechanics, or ways to compete with people. Pop Pop excels in all of these ways, with colourful, polished visuals set to a very of its era soundtrack, a much more frantic and objective based way to play, and with local and internet based multiplayer available alongside the traditional scoreboard. Plain and simple, Pop Pop is superb, a classic fast paced and manic arcade game that is as simple to pick up as Pong but with all sorts of little tricks to figure out to stop the basic act of hitting a ball with a bat from getting dull. Pop Pop was, at least initially, a carbonised game. This means that it possesses the ability to boot and work on the classic Mac OS from System 8.5 as well as OS 10. Patches flowed for a reasonable amount of time, with the game becoming a universal app in 2007, meaning it would work natively on Intel Silicon up to a point. At time of recording, the upper limits have not been documented, but as you can see here, High Sierra on a 2012 MacBook Air is too high. There was a Windows port as well, it's not been archived anywhere and is thus unavailable. Ambrosia began drip feeding information on the game over a year before its release, with a few sources indicating that it was in development for the best part of three. Some pre-release screens were shared via the Ambrosia Times newsletter, which I found quite interesting. Visuals are somewhat rougher, pops have descriptions, one of these is worded rather strongly, and among them was an image displaying the game's integration with the Game Ranger matchmaking service, with a very colourful conversation going on in one of the background windows. Gameplay is mouse controlled, and a function that I find oddly impressive is Pop Pop's ability to recognise multiple separate mice with numerous buttons. I plugged in my Logitech G502 to play local multiplayer and was very surprised to find that all its clickers were assignable. OS 9 needs help recognising two, let alone nine. As a result of this, playing versus on the same Mac is seamless, comfortable and fun. Now I don't think I need to explain to you lot how the basics of Breakout works, so I'll just focus on the unique mechanics. Versus mode sees two players select a pop and then play competitively against each other. There's AI if one's on their own. Instead of losing a life if the bat misses the ball, it drops all the bricks down a level, gradually making their way towards the bat like Puzzle Bubble, or Snood. The bricks edge forward on their own accord as well, with the game lost if one crosses this line. If the ball breaks multiple blocks between visits to the bat, the additional ones are tallied up the side to be released onto the opponent's play area upon the ball's return. Kind of similar to how the grey blobs work in Puyo Pop. A massive stack of these can really sting, however if the opponent manages to break them before they have solidified and lost the black rectangle in the middle, they actually return to their original side as metal blocks, which require two hits, so a huge volley of blocks can potentially cause problems for the sender. Players have a tad more control over the ball as well, with a magnet deployable at any time that brings said circle back to the bat over the top of anything in the way. The block's broken tally is however reset whenever this is activated. Each time a ball hits a bat, it generates a little yellow token. These can be used to charge up the ball to enable it to break multiple bricks before bouncing back, which is particularly useful for powering through a heap of newly delivered hollow blocks and critical for quickly eliminating a row of blocks that are getting dangerously close. Finally, each pop has a special move, requiring four tokens and about four seconds to charge it up. Effects of these vary. Some inhibit movement of the bat like Texas gunshots and Mini T's wind. Ioni's flowers get in the way visually, so I'm not sure if they really do anything against the AI. Some inhibit the ball like Ducky's, um, ducks. And Zap's vaulty things. Bombastic's bombs cause the blocks to drop if they're not caught. And Mr. Man's virus adds more blocks to the opponent's play area. The effects of these are all fairly mild on their own, but can really give an edge during more chaotic moments later on in a match when everything has sped up. 
Mr. Man's special is perhaps a little better than the others when utilised against the AI, but human opponents I've played know how to dispatch the virus pretty quickly. Tactics-wise, I've tended to focus on removing as many blocks as I could while building up the charge tokens, and then unloading a bunch of special moves all at once while my play area was a bit calmer. I've no doubt, however, that there are numerous strategies and tricks that I am not aware of that online players will have used in abundance against one another. Do pipe up in the comments with your favourites if you have some. While the harder AIs offer a fair challenge, the ultimate test of skill could be found on the net, with the game's tracker, dead now of course, able to pit players against each other. While I would have loved to have seen what a game between two highly experienced players looked like, an idea of what it was like can be found on Ambrosia's forums via Internet Archive's Wayback Machine, where a few tournaments were organised between the posters. For a much less manic play experience, there's Puzzle Mode. The objective here is to break the targets, which is fairly easy on the first two difficulty levels, but can get quite fiendish in the higher two, with unbreakable blocks that gradually edge towards the bat, effectively putting a time limit on how long the player has to clear it. The penalisation for using the magnet is a little different, with the player's score tumbling down for however long it's activated. For this reason, I found myself using it to change the ball direction rather than fully recalling it to the bat. It can be quite handy to bring it part way across the screen and release once it's in the middle of a heap of blocks, removing them from the inside out. Clever magnet usage is key to success in some of the harder stages, helping pull the ball into otherwise hard to get alcoves. Stages like this, however, typically spelt the end for me. Upon losing, players get a score and get to see how they place on the scoreboard. Pop Pop did have an unofficial editor that was put together by James Dolan. It's OSX only and a tad rough around the edges, but I gave it a spin and was able to slap a few puzzle stages together without any problems. I'm actually quite surprised there were no user-made level packs available given the relative ease of making them and how well known the user-made add-on pages are for Ambrosia titles. Drag the generated file into the folder that corresponds with the type of level that has been made and it will be thrown into the mix. And that's Pop Pop. This is a lovely little game that is definitely worth installing on a capable system. One slight annoyance is getting registration codes to work. This involves fiddling with the max clock, but there is a full explanation on how to do this on the Abandonware sites, linked in the video description. I'm eager to hear your thoughts and memories of the game, so do pop something in the comments. And if you fancy more content on old Mac games, do take a look around the rest of the channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and see you next time.